One way that looks very promising is the grid tie system. Consumers can save between 30 and 40 percent off their utility bill, and in some cases, a utility company uh, will be paying the customer back uh, by through this effort. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, national law requires an investor-owned utility company to allow interconnection of a solar or wind power system. We also need to encourage other utility companies to engage into this program. One reason why people are not taking advantage of the grid tie system is because of the fact of the upfront cost. To, to have one of these systems installed into your house, it will cost anywhere between $8,000 and $30,000. It definitely pays to shop around a little bit. One reason why the manufacturing costs are so high is because it's a fairly new product. Just like whenever VCRs came out, they sold for $1,000 each. So, my solution to this is to bring in a, a lot more business pertaining to the fact of renewable energy. If we get those businesses here, we can create more business in, and more manufacturers in this business. California is already, they've already got the jump on us, but I do believe that Houston soon will be leading the way in this technology. Thank you. Anise? I would say that Houston has been the oil and gas capital of the world. It needs to be the, the energy capital of the world, including the um, green and renewable forms of energy. Uh, we need to, we are well on our way to be the the wind capital. Uh, the city is a major purchaser of wind energy, and uh, many of the new wind companies are, are headquartered in Houston. Where we really lag is in uh, solar. Uh, one of the problems is that the city doesn't own the power utilities, and, and that's uh, a critical reason why we lag behind other cities like Austin and, and San Antonio, which do own their utilities. I think there are Certain things we can do, we can uh, provide incentives for the relocation of companies, uh, the, the green and renewable energy companies here into the city of Houston. We need to work with the state legislature to, uh, again, try to uh, have a mechanism for overriding bans on solar panels in uh, deep restricted neighborhoods. And uh, I think there's a potential for the city of Houston to negotiate on behalf of the ratepayers with uh, center point, we negotiate directly for uh, on, on our power needs, and we do have the ability to negotiate for our ratepayers. There's a it's an opt-in uh, rather than an opt-out provision, but I think we can put that as part of our our package <coughs> and perhaps uh, uh, step in and incentivize uh, directly with the uh, the power company for those who want to add solar energy. Thank you, Gene Law. Yes, I, I think the question uh, really goes at the heart of what is it that everyday people can do if they believe that there is a, a, an energy crisis and that they want to adopt alternative energy forms and, and really be part of a new movement in America to use alternative renewable energy. Uh, I certainly believe Houston is the energy capital of the world and will always be the energy capital of the world and our task is to take hold of alternative energy, incorporate it into our industry and our economy so that uh, it, we continue to be the energy capital of the world for all purposes. The question asks us to give a couple of very specific examples of things that people could do. Let me offer a couple. One, uh, the legislature did pass House Bill 1937 which gives the ability for residents of Houston to create an alternative energy assessment district. This could be in a neighborhood, this could be in a large community, it could even be a single house. But essentially, uh, people agree to pay an, an assessment for alternative energy. And as a result of them creating a district, the city creates the district, as a result of that, the city then makes money available to uh, the uh, uh, the residents of the district uh, through a revenue stream that is based on the assessment that's going to come in. And then the residents use the money from the city to put in alternative energy forms in their homes and in their businesses. And then as a result of that, the citizens get the federal tax abatements and the energy savings and able to pay off uh, and save from the assessment 
and the city gets the assessment and is able to pay off the, the money that was there. That's one create, creative way that we can start doing right here in Houston, now in our own neighborhoods, to really bring alternative energy. Beyond that, we need to explore uh, fuel cells. Fuel cells can literally make electricity from natural gas. And so we don't have the problem of power lines. All of it's underground, we're not uh, disrupted. It's a new form uh, that, that we need to explore and use. But ultimately, the best thing we can do is to make this city green, to plant trees, to have open space, to have beautiful parks. And when elected your mayor, I will be the greenest guy in Houston. Thank you. <clears throat> Peter Brown? Well, let me try to top that one now. <laughs> I'm, I'm Peter, Peter Brown. But if you check my track record, I'm green. Uh, look, I'm, I'm chair of the Sustainable Growth Committee of, this, of the city, and I'll take some uh, credit for helping uh, Bill White become one of the top ten eco-mayors of uh, American cities, and uh, I guarantee you I'm going to be an eco-mayor when I'm elected. Uh, but I'll give you some very specifics. I will sign the United States uh, U.S. Conference of Mayors Accord on Global Warming uh, with specific benchmarks to get our carbon footprint down to 1990 levels. We haven't done that. 500 big city mayors have done it. We've got to have specific planning benchmarks to become a green renewable energy city. Uh, the second thing is uh, I've made a budget amendment uh, which was approved uh, to uh, 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 adopt uh, a uh, new ordinance that allows the city of Houston to give rebates on uh, solar installations, etc. The county has that, but because we don't have that ordinance, the people who live in Houston cannot take advantage of the county rebates. That's, that's, that's not smart policy. So we're going to have this uh, ordinance, and you'll be able to get a rebate on solar uh, installation and energy efficient uh, improvements from both the county and the city. I, I'll take 100% of the credit for that. I know I'm getting fair wide a little bit. Also, uh, also uh, supported uh, the uh, uh, the increased purchase by the city of our electrical power from 27% renewable sources to 32% renewable sources. There's a principle here. If we want to make renewable energy work, we've got to increase the demand for energy, for renewable energy, and that's what the city of Houston's doing. We're setting a model for that. And I'll, I'll just conclude with this. I'm the only candidate here who has actually designed and built a, a green building. And it's a technical expertise I have. And, uh, you know, we can talk about SER 14 and our 24 walls and all this sort of thing. Peter, but if you, it's going to happen uh, with me at the helm. Thank you. And Roy Morales. Please. Well, if you really want, want to regain the title energy capital world, our Congress needs to let us drill where there's a well. That's how we're going to regain it. We've regained it in the New York Minute. They allowed us to do that. The other thing that we have to be concerned about right now is this cap and trade and how it's going to affect this city, it's going to affect this state as far as our energy cap capability. I do agree that we need to look at renewable sources. That's important because 2012, we're going to see a shortage of generation because what, have, what has occurred over the last few years with TXU when they were planning on building these coal burning plants in the east part of Texas. These were clean coal burning, burning plants, but we had two mayors in this state that ran a public campaign against them and now we're going to pay the price in 2012. So we need to start yesterday with solar, Fuel cells. We've been using those on the space shuttle since the early 1980s. That technology is there. Now, unfortunately, we don't have a lot of wind here at the surface level in the city of Houston, but we do have one of our skyscrapers. And I've been pushing that since I do have a company that focuses on alternative energy. We need to look at that. But we can bring jobs here to Houston because these wind turbines that I've studied, and I know they can be put on from Brownsville all the way to Miami, and in the hill country, and the mountains of Denver. We can start building those here. We can bring jobs here, because it's going to be needed here real soon. 